initiative is our government's response to the challenge of climate change. In Copenhagen in December, I announced that the United States would work with other countries to mobilize $100 billion a year by 2020 to address the climate needs of developing countries. The effects of climate change will be felt by us all, but women in developing countries will be particularly hard hit because as all of the changes of weather go on to produce more drought conditions and more storms and more floods, the women will have to work even harder to produce food and walk even farther to find water safe for drinking. They are on the front lines of this crisis, which makes them key partners and problem solvers. So we believe we must increase women's access to adaptation and mitigation technologies and programs so they can protect their families and help us all meet this global challenge. These initiatives amount to more than an assortment of programs designed with them in mind. They reflect a fundamental shift in U.S. policy, one that is taking place in offices across Washington and in our embassies around the globe. But we are still called to do more, every single one of us. The Obama administration will continue to work for the ratification of CEDAW. But we are determined because we believe it is past time to take this step for women in our country and in all countries. Here at the United Nations, a single, vibrant agency dedicated to women. Run by a strong leader with a seat at the Secretary General's table would help galvanize the greater levels of coordination and commitment that the women of the world deserve. Yeah. And if the United Nations strives to better support the world's women, it would benefit from having more women in more of its leadership positions. women working unnoticed in every corner of the world. There are women with great talent and experience whose potential leadership is still largely untapped, and they deserve the chance to serve and lead. The Beijing Declaration and the Platform for Action was not only a pledge to help women in other lands, it was also a promise by all countries to do more to advance opportunity and equality for our own citizens. Because in every country on earth. Talent is universal, but opportunity is not. In my travels across the United States, I've met women for whom higher education is a distant dream. They have the talent, they have the drive, but they don't have the money. I've met mothers trapped in abusive relationships, desperate to escape with their children, but with no means of support. I've met too many women who cannot afford necessary health care for themselves and their children. And I've met girls who have heard their whole lives that they were less than, less talented, less worthy of respect, until they eventually came to believe it was true. So whether we live in New York or New Delhi, Lagos or La Paz, women and girls share many of the same struggles and aspirations. The principle of women's equality is a simple, self-evident truth. But the work of turning that principle into practice is rarely simple. It takes years and even generations of patient, persistent work, not only to change a country's laws, but to change its people's minds, to weave throughout culture and tradition in public discourse and private views the unassailable fact of women's worth and women's rights. Some of you may have seen the cover of the most recent issue of The Economist. If you haven't, I commend it to you. And like me, you may do a double take. Because I looked quickly at it, and I thought it said genocide. 
And then I looked more carefully at it, and it said, gender sign. Because it was pointing out the uncomfortable fact that there are approximately 100 million fewer girls than there should be if one looked at all the population data. I was so struck by that. A word that I had never heard before, but which so tragically describes what has gone on, what we have let go on in our world. Promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women. And that goal is essential to the realization of every other goal. Today, this principle is also at the heart of the foreign policy of the United States. We believe that women are critical to solving virtually every challenge we face as individual nations and as a community of nations. Strategies that ignore the lives and contributions of women have little chance of succeeding. So, in the Obama administration, we are integrating women throughout our work around the world. We are consulting with women as we design and implement our policies. We are taking into greater account how those policies will impact women and girls. And we are working to identify women leaders and potential leaders around the world to make them our partners and to help support their work. And we are measuring progress in part by how much we improve the conditions of the lives of women and girls. This isn't window dressing, and it's not just good politics. President Obama and I believe that the subjugation of women is a threat to the national security of the United States. <laughs> our own daughters, the opportunities that we know would give them a chance to make the most of their lives, to fulfill that God-given potential that resides within each of us, but that we would recognize doing the same for other daughters of mothers and fathers everywhere would make the world a safer and better place for our own children. So we must measure our progress not by what we say in great venues like this, but in how well we are able to improve the condition of women's lives. Some near at hand who deserve the opportunities many of us take for granted, some in far distant cities and remote villages, women we are not likely ever to meet, but whose lives will be shaped by our actions. Let us recommit ourselves as individuals, as nations, as the United Nations, to build upon the progress of the past and achieve once and for all that principle that we all believe in or we would not be here today. The rights and opportunities of all women and girls deserve our attention and our support. Because as they make progress, then the progress that should be the birthright of future generations will be more likely and the 21st century will fulfill the promise that we hold out today. So let's go forth and be re-energized in the work that lies ahead. Thank you all. Very